What's going on guys? Basic here. The league that I'm in is on break for the week, so rather than upload another time trial tutorial, I wanted to make another video describing some advanced tips and tricks that show up in high level time trials. My pro strats video covers a little bit of this, but that video was specifically in response to a comment I received on one of my speedrun videos, and so it didn't have a whole lot of structure to it. So welcome to my advanced tips and tricks video, where I'm going to be covering 10 strategies that are used in high level Mario Kart 8 Deluxe speedruns and time trials. Like the name implies, being advanced strategies, you really don't need to learn any of these to be a successful racer, or even a halfway decent time trialer. Hell, I only just learned about a couple of these myself within the past few weeks, and I've been able to put up top 10 cartridge times and top 20 overall in pretty much every 16 track no items category on speedrun.com. But they are all useful, and not super difficult to execute in real time. Except for motion glider, which I'll cover at the end of the video. And you can check the timestamps for more info on that. As always, if you find this type of content useful, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like and a comment to let me know. And if you provide some useful feedback, it may even get incorporated in future videos. The first technique we're going to talk about is fast glider. I went over this in my pro ramp strats video, but I want to make sure that I incorporate as many strategies into one video as possible. Basically, sweet sweet canyon, sunshine airport, Cloud Top Cruise, Rainbow Road, Yoshi Valley, and Big Blue have these special kinds of gliders known as cannon gliders. Like the name implies, unlike the rest of the gliders in the game, these ramps don't just passively pull your glider out and let you float to the ground. These ramps actually shoot you across gigantic gaps at really high speeds. Now what's important to note is that there is some delay between when you go off the ramp and when the glider comes out, and you won't be going at the cannon speed until after your glider is fully out. Hopping slightly before you get to the glider so that you land on top of the ramp actually causes your glider to come out slightly faster, and this is about a tenth of a second faster than tricking off the ramp. Here's a slow motion comparison between going off the glider with no trick tricking off the glider ramp, and fast glider strats. Technique number two is called counter hopping. Basically, in order to build up mini turbos, you need to do a drift, which means that you can't really build up mini turbos without your cart turning. Take this turn on water park as an example. After coming out of the loop-de-loop, -loop, you want to try and build up a mini turbo here. But if you start your drift immediately, it's basically impossible to build up the mini turbo without either going into the off-road or else taking a bad line. Doing a hop to the left before starting the drift allows you to build up the mini turbo quickly while avoiding these issues. You can basically think of counter hopping as a realignment technique for building up mini turbos in situations that would otherwise be very difficult or even impossible. Doing many of these alignment hops can even let you build up mini turbos on straightaways, although this is incredibly difficult to do effectively and I don't really recommend trying to learn this without first mastering the other parts of whatever track you're trying to learn first. Technique number three is called low glider. Pressing the drift button right after your glider comes out causes the glider to come out slightly lower than usual, and this causes you to get back to the ground much more quickly. This is useful because generally speaking, air speed is going to be lower than ground speed, so the less time you spend in the air, the better. There's also a few situations, such as in Royal Raceway on 200cc, where getting to the ground as soon as possible is necessary to even run the track properly. Low glider can be extended to technique number 4, which I'm going to call glider mini turbos or glider MTs. This shows up all over the place on 150cc, and is probably one of the more complicated strategies to execute. I'm going to use water park on 150cc as an example. When you get up to this glider, instead of going straight and tricking off the glider, what you want to do is build up an ultra mini turbo or UMT, go off the right hand side, and just drift off the glider ramp. Your UMT will get released automatically, at which point you immediately hit the drift button to get the low glider. Then to get back onto the track, you hold a down and left angle on the joystick, kind of in the direction of a 7 or 8 if you think about your joystick like a clock face. Now I'm not really sure why this is the case, but holding your joystick in this angle with the low glider 
causes you to gain a significant amount of forward momentum. This also shows up on Electrodrome, Animal Crossing, and Hyrule Circuit, just to name a few examples. For the Animal Crossing and Hyrule Circuit glider strats, the angle you need to hold is down and right, or about a 4 or 5 on the joystick. Like I said, this shows up all over the place on 150cc, and there are way too many examples to list them all. So just check out the world record runs on the MK8DX Records YouTube channel to see which courses use these strats and which ones don't. There's a somewhat related piece of tech that's more common on 200cc. If you're able to build up a UMT before a glider, it's faster to release the UMT and just go straight off the glider than it is to trick. The reason for this is due to the mechanics of how glider tricks work in this game. Essentially what's going on under the hood is that when you trick off a glider, the game resets your speed to some value that's dependent on your airspeed, before giving you the boost from the trick. It turns out that this fixed speed is slower than your Ultra Mini Turbo speed. Water Park, Sunshine Airport, Wario Stadium, and Electrodrome are some examples of where this tech is used. But again, Check out the individual track world records on the MK8DX Records channel to determine whether or not it's the appropriate strategy to use. Technique number six is called Super Bounce. On courses like Cloud Top Cruise, DK Jungle, and Music Park, there are these little bounce pads that you can trick off of to get a little boost to speed. But it turns out that if you're able to build up a mini turbo, then if you release it right at the same time as you do the trick, it gives you significantly more forward momentum than simply tricking off of the bounce pads. Note that you shouldn't always be trying to go for this, but most of the time it is faster. Here are some comparisons between just tricking off the bounce pads and doing the super bounce. The next three techniques are related to drifting. Technique number seven is called slip drift. All this means is holding down the drift button and a direction in midair so that you start drifting immediately upon landing. As far as I can tell, this refers both to situations where you're landing from a ramp or a glider and in situations like Bowser's Castle where the terrain of the track causes you to hit a little pocket of airtime. The important thing to point out is that as long as you're holding the drift button and a direction in midair, when you land, you will do a drift. This shows up all over the place on both 150 and 200cc, but it's especially important to learn how to do this for 200cc, since starting your drifts as early as possible is going to be really important for being able to stay on the course. Technique number 8 is delayed drifting. Like I mentioned in my drifting video, most of the time, you'll start your drifts first by doing a little hop with the exception being slip drifts. If you hold down a direction on the joystick when you do the hop, then you'll start turning immediately, and when you land, you'll be in the drift. An alternative strategy is to start the drift with a neutral hop and delay pressing any buttons on the joystick until right before you land. I'm gonna be 100% honest here. I still don't have a really firm grasp of exactly why this happens, but basically this technique will allow you to build up mini turbos just a little bit faster. This is beneficial for a couple of reasons. First, it allows you to take better lines on many of the turns in the game. Second, the faster you build up mini turbos, the less time you need to spend drifting. And since drifting is slower than just driving straight, this is what allows us to save time. According to PNS15, who holds top times in basically every no item speedrun category in this game, it generally saves between about 0.3 and 0.5 seconds on most courses on 200cc. Technique number nine is brake drifting. I mentioned this in my drifting video, but I received some helpful feedback that it was probably one of the weaker sections of that video, so I think it'd be beneficial to cover it in more detail here. In that video, I basically just said that brake drifting is holding down the brake button while you drift, which helps you build tighter lines. The thing is, the actual technique is quite a bit more complicated than that in execution, because you only want to hold down the brake button just enough to get a good line on whatever turn it is that you're trying to take. And if it's possible to take a turn without brake drifting, then you almost always want to try and do so, even if it's more difficult. 
This is because the act of putting on the brakes slows you down, and not only will this just generally lose you time, but if you hold down the button too long, you can even lose your drift. For reference, on Toad Harbor, my shroomless PB was right around a 134 flat, and in real-time runs, I could almost never get less than a 135. Once I learned how to take the alternate path shortcut without brake drifting, I immediately started regularly getting sub 134 times in speedruns, and my PB now is close to a 133. Now the thing is that how long you need to hold the brake button is pretty situational, and there are even some cases where you want to be constantly tapping and releasing the brake. So let's take a look at some examples of brake drifting in action. I'm going to cut the music here for a bit, so pay close attention to the sounds that the cart makes to hear how brake drifting should sound, and this will give you an idea of how long you need to be holding the brake button for on some of the turns in the game. The last technique I wanted to briefly go over is motion glider. Remember how I said that holding a down and left or down and right angle after going off a glider causes you to gain a bunch of speed? Well, if you use motion controls and hold those angles on both the joystick and on the controller itself, the speed boosts actually get compounded. Now in general, playing with motion controls is a lot less precise, and as far as I am aware, there are no top level time trialers that use this all the time. So how do they take advantage of motion gliders? Well, they basically play with motion controls off until they get to the glider, pause mid-run, turn on motion controls, get the right angles with the joystick and the controller, and then pause the game again to turn off motion controls. This only works because the game doesn't keep track of your race time while paused. I've put a link to ARMY's video that shows how all this looks with hand cam. Now all this pausing and unpausing nonsense really rubs me the wrong way. Not only that, but you can't do these strategies when you're racing online or if you're doing a real-time speedrun. So this is why I really have no desire to learn how to do this strat properly, and even though it is faster on a lot of tracks, my time trial tutorials will never include this beyond a simple, oh yeah, motion glider is faster here type of comment. So that's gonna be it for me for today, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And if you found it useful or entertaining or helpful, I'd really appreciate if you dropped a like and a comment to let me know. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.